Hey there, good afternoon, good morning, and good evening, wherever you're watching this from. We appreciate you tuning in. This is Jeremiah Conjure with Annuity Association, and we are right smack dab in the middle of the month of June, which happens to also be Annuity Awareness Month. So I have committed to uh, trying to put out some content around uh, general uh, annuity information just to help people become more aware of the multitude of benefits that annuities can provide someone that's pro approaching retirement or that has recently retired or maybe you've been retired for a while. Either way, annuities can offer immense benefits for people looking to safely grow their money, protect it from downside risk, and still give themselves fair rates of return based on the performances of the market linked indexes. Uh, so today's video, we're going to be specifically talking about fixed indexed annuities and how to appropriately use them for balanced and protected growth. So if you're in the market looking for a way to still safely grow your money while also having peace of mind that you are not being exposed to the downside risks of the markets to earn a fair rate of return, then a fixed indexed annuity is definitely a vehicle that you should be considering. And if you'd like to find out more about how a fixed indexed annuity could possibly suit your needs for protected growth, we work with clients in all 50 states, and we'd be honored to have the opportunity to speak with you. To uh, work with us directly, you can visit our website at annuityassociation.com. Right there on the main page, there's a red button to schedule your free virtual consultation to see how we can help point you in the right direction. We also specialize in helping prospective clients and comparing uh, annuities that they own or that they're possibly thinking about buying and ultimately helping them make an educated and informed decision on which annuity is right for their individual circumstances. And we'd be happy to help uh, with that as well. Before we get started, let me go ahead and share my screen so we can get our handy dandy disclaimer out of the way and then we'll get right into uh, the review for this particular annuity awareness month video. Okay, so again, June is annuity awareness month. We are going to be discussing fixed indexed annuities for protected growth and this is an independent review brought to you by Annuity Association. Dot com. This is a, a review, not a recommendation to buy or sell an annuity. No insurance company has endorsed this review in any way, nor do we receive any compensation for this review. This review is meant to be an independent review at the request of website visitors so they can see our perspective when breaking down the positives and negatives of this particular annuity. Before purchasing any investment product, be sure to do your own due diligence and consult a properly licensed professional should you have specific questions as they relate to your individual circumstances. All names, marks, and materials used for this review are property of the respective owners and not that of annuityassociation.com. While care has been made to ensure this review is complete and accurate, no guarantees are made to the completeness or accuracy. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. We are going to be taking a look at a particular document that was provided by our good friends over at North American. So let me go ahead and enlarge this. If you haven't done so already and you'd like to enlarge your screen, you can do so by clicking the bottom right hand corner of your viewing window wherever you're watching this video today, and it should give you an option to enlarge your screen. So today we're going to be discussing again the fixed indexed annuities. They're great vehicles for protected growth. The one thing that they all have in common is they all have a contractual guarantee of principal protection. So an annuity in its basic form is a contract between you and an insurance company. And inside that contract, annuities typically have guarantees. And the, those guarantees can typically be on principal protection they can also be guarantees on lifetime income, and they can also be guarantees on um, some different uh, growth benefits, such as legacy or even long-term care. So today we're going to be focusing on balanced accumulation, how to use a fixed indexed annuity in retirement for protected growth. 
giving ourselves uh, fair rates of return through market upside performance and market linked index strategies that are tied to the upsides of the markets, but also knowing that we have peace of mind that we can't lose money due to market downturns or volatility. And so our good friends over at North American Company have put this uh, brochure together and uh, it's my honor to share that with you today. So it's all about finding the right mix of growth potential and protection. And when it comes to balanced out accumulation, finding the right mix of growth potential and protection is very key. And so what does risk look like to you? As consumers are nearing retirement, balancing financial risk in an ever-changing market can be challenging and scary. Many consumers are now faced with self-funding their retirement due to the uncertainty around Social Security and pension plans. And the goal in accumulating retirement savings is to balance risk safely between asset growth potential and protection. Consumers want to ensure what they are saving can grow and provide some level of protection in case of economic volatility. So when we are working with prospective clients and in, in, in looking at risk, it's really a challenge at times to help somebody understand that they're entering an entirely new phase of their life. When they're in their working phase, we call that the accumulation phase of life. That's when you know, we're earning uh, wages and earned income that are helping us cover our essential expenses and lifestyle. And as we approach retirement or we do retire, that new phase of life is now called the deaccumulation phase or uh, the income phase. It's when we're being challenged to convert our assets that we've accumulated during our working years. And we're being challenged to now convert those assets into safer growth and income. Uh, retirement is all about income. It's not about just your assets. Uh, and what we find is that because of um, you know, pension plans and things of that nature being a dinosaur, they're practically extinct in today's era, uh, less than 13% of private sector employees have pensions today. And because of that, we're now being forced to convert our assets that we've saved in 401ks and IRAs to income. And right now, most of us only have Social Security to rely on as a guaranteed source of income. And even with that, there's still some uncertainty to be talked about or discussed because of, of current uh, economic environments surrounding this Social Security uh, pool, the, the, the plan that uh, manages Social Security. So with that being said, it's challenging more now than ever before in previous generations past of trying to understand what risks we face in retirement and more importantly, how are we going to convert our assets to more uh, protected growth and more importantly, income. And so if you look at this, this is basically a scale of the different types of investment vehicles or asset classes in, in some cases and where they fall on the market risk spectrum. And so if you look to the left, we have the asset classes or vehicles or what are also known as securities that are exposed to market risk. And these are things commonly found in our 401ks and IRA plans. And those are stocks, mutual funds, variable annuities and bonds. All of those are going to be exposed to market risk and are going to you know, move up and down with different economic conditions based on the environment that we're in. And we're experiencing that right now. You know, today is June 17th of 2022. And, um, you know, while it, it's a very challenging time for a lot of people that are approaching retirement or that have recently retired, um, on the advisor side, you know, it, there's a silver lining for us. And that is, it's been so long since we've seen very challenging market conditions and environments to see how these asset classes and how these indexes and things are going are, are holding up. And so if you look at a traditional retirement portfolio, a 60 40 portfolio, 60 uh, percent in stocks, 40 percent in bonds, we are being uh, flooded with, you know, 
people that are looking for help on how to mitigate the risk because both sides of that portfolio, the stocks and the bonds, are experiencing high levels of volatility. And it's it's all due to the you know economic conditions. You know, we're in an inflationary environment, we're in a rising interest rate environment where the Fed is trying to control uh, inflation. And uh, with that being said, bonds are being affected by those rising interest rates. And then on the other side, stocks are being challenged and, and experiencing high levels of volatility due to the uncertainty around the economic environment and, and the speculation that we're going to be entering a recession if we haven't already done so. And so there has to be a better way. And, and, and in my opinion, there is. And it's about understanding the different tools that, are, that can be used to mitigate the risks associated with these types of market environments. And so if you look to the right-hand side of the screen here, these are the vehicles that are not exposed to market risk. Of course, cash being one, bank CDs or money market accounts. And that's where you're going to find fixed indexed annuities as well as traditional fixed annuities. All of those vehicles are going to offer rates of return potential with no market exposure, no market downside risk, no volatility risk. And so let's take a look at the S&P 500 performance history. You know, North American is an advocate as well as myself at Annuity Association where we believe you should retire on your terms, not when the market dictates. And so if you're in the markets, maybe you have one of those 60-40 portfolios and you know, you're approaching a, a window of time, about 10 years, let's say, of when you expect to retire, volatility risk is the number one risk that you face. And what we call sequence of returns risk is even more important because over that next 10 year period, if the, the sequence of returns from the markets is unfavorable, meaning when you get closer to retirement, those market returns are are negative or just lackluster for that matter, and you're not getting enough growth, or maybe you're losing some money in your portfolio, it can have a severe impact on the success or the outcomes of your of the longevity of your retirement plan. And uh, I talk to clients sometimes about this concept in that, you know, when you, if you are faced with unfavorable sequence of returns, and in the latter years of approaching your retirement, you know, let's say the last three years before you retire, you have a, a recession where we have negative returns for a year or two or maybe three years at worst, uh, which it's rare for that to happen, but it could. And we never know. We don't have a crystal ball. But if that occurred, when you get to your desired retirement age goal, you have two options. You either retire with less money or you keep working. And, and that's it. There's no way to change what has happened. And the only thing we can do today is make decisions right now before those what ifs happen to address those what ifs and potential uh, risks that we face. And so here we're looking at uh, all the way back to 1997. And what they're doing here is they're showing uh, different economic cycles. You know, the economy moves in cycles. It has since the beginning of time. And when you look at the different economic cycles, you'll notice a, uh, a booming economy where the, the, the markets are going up at a steep incline. And then uh, in those downturns and those recessions, when we are experiencing contraction in the marketplace, you'll notice those steep declines and it repeats itself. And uh, it has since the beginning of time. And so if you look from you know, December 31st of 96, which is the first, I guess, day on this graph, you'll notice that there was 103% gain from December 31st of 96 to March 25th of 2000. And if you're watching this video and you're maybe approaching retirement or have recently retired, I'm sure you were around uh, in the investing world during the dot-com bust, which was in the early 2000s, you know, 2001. Uh, two and three, more importantly, two and three being the worst of the bunch. But from March 25th of 2000, which was the peak, 
it came down from there. And if you go down to those years, 2002 to 2003, you'll notice that the markets declined 49% from their high. And so imagine retiring at that peak point, March 25th of 2000, and you had no idea. You you were in the dot com bubble. You were you thought everything with the dot com uh, name on it, you know, pets dot com and uh, you name it dot com. You thought everything was going to be hunky dory and keep going up from there, and and that's what a lot of people thought, and that's what happens. That's the way we think in a in a bubble because of recency bias. All we see is things going up, and that's all we associate. And we we never pay attention to the what ifs uh, if that you know scenario changes and if the conditions change and the markets go down, what happens? And so if you were retiring on March 25th, 2000, those next few years were going to be very stressful, especially if you didn't have a pension to cover the bulk of your expenses in retirement. A pension, as you know, is a guaranteed income stream, and it's there to help you uh, plan and budget for your retirement. And many people today don't have pensions. So if you didn't have one then, you were definitely feeling, you know, the pressure, knowing that if you stayed in the markets during that time, and this is if you were 100% practically in the market, um, you know, you would have gone down roughly 50% from your high. So if you had a million dollars, that million dollars would have been $500,000 on October 10th of 2002. It's scary to think about. And when sequence of returns risk is then multiplied by withdrawals for income. So if you have these declining markets and you're relying on your portfolio to, to provide income to help you meet your needs, you actually have a compounding effect on your losses because you're being forced to sell shares when they're down at lower prices than what you might have even bought them at. And so you have to sell more shares to generate the same amount of income. And it has a compounding effect on your losses. And in addition, because your earned wages are no longer coming in because you have retired, you're, you're no longer able to dollar cost average and, and reinvest back into the market when the markets are going down to average everything out. You don't have the ability to do that. You lose that. And it's a scary scenario, but that can be easily mitigated when planning appropriately. And one thing I will tell you is that if you look across the, the globe, or at least in the U.S., in regards to the top economists that specialize in retirement income planning, while they all have differing opinions on portfolio structure and uh, asset classes and things in terms of creating optimizations, the one thing they all unanimously agree on, 100% of them, is that adding a income or protected growth annuity is an optimal way to mitigate retirement risk and de-risk a portfolio and provide enough income to mitigate sequence of returns risk, which we would, you know, what we're seeing and talking about right here. And uh, you can go out and Google all of the top economists about annuities. Some of those people would be Roger Ibbotson, who is a PhD in retirement research. Uh, he's the, if I recall, the head professor at Yale uh, for finance. Um, you can look up Moshi Malevsky, who is also a PhD in retirement research. He also is a head professor uh, at this uh, uh, can't name, remember the name of that school, but it's in Toronto. Um, there's numerous economists that specialize in retirement planning that all agree annuities have a place in mitigating retirement risk as well as sequence of return risk during the first 10 years of retirement. Now, let's fast forward and look down the road here from 2002, and you'll notice we went back into a strong performing market. GDP was continuing to accelerate and climb, and you'll notice another peak here at October 10th of 2007, where the markets went up 101% from the low point back in 2002. And so this was in 2007. I was 
around then, I was an adult then, I actually had bought my first piece of real estate in July of 2007. So just before the peak. Um, again, you know, hindsight's always 2020, but uh, knowing what I know now, I would have never purchased that house <laughs> if I knew this was going to occur. But uh, anyways, that was a, a, a rare uh, or an unfortunate occurrence, but it happened and I learned from it. And uh, anyways, you'll notice it went up 101%. And then in March of two, uh, 2009, it went down 57% from the high. So again, if you were retiring in 07 and you happened to be retiring, not knowing that this you know, decline was going to happen and that we were in a housing bubble and ultimately a global financial crisis, you know, those next few years were going to be very challenging if you did not plan for that type of event. That's what it comes down to is making sure that we plan appropriately using all of the tools available at our disposal to mitigate these potential what ifs and these uh, sequence of returns, risks and things to that degree. Again, going back up and if you notice, We've been in the longest run of all time, the longest bull run of all time. And if I actually have to scroll back up to get to the peak, that's how high it is on this screen. So as of December, uh, let's go to first uh, to February 19th of 2020, right before the COVID crash, you'll see the markets went up 401% from the March 2009 uh, valley, you know, the decline. And then COVID came around in March of 2020. It went down 34%, but within 110 days, if I remember correctly, the markets bounced back. And then we added another 113% growth in the S&P from that point. So overall, look how high the markets are. Now, if you're, you know, living, if you're living under a box or in a, under a rock, I guess is the saying, and you don't know why, this graph has just gone through the roof uh, these latter years, you know, just recently. It's because of all the money that's been printed due to the COVID pandemic. All the money that was printed, $7 trillion to help bail people out of default and, and, and losing their jobs and not having income. Um, also used to help bail out small businesses that weren't able to keep their doors open. All of that money in some fashion has ended up back in the markets. And that is why the you know graph is so high. And right now, you know, we're we're possibly heading into a recession. I'm not a doom and gloom guy here. I'm not here to try to instill fear. I don't operate in that manner. I use factual data and things, but it doesn't take a lot to analyze where we're at in the economy and start to see that inflation is is rampant and taking off. And if that is not curbed, uh, bad things are going to happen. And as a result, because of the Fed trying to curb that inflation, we're seeing interest rates rise. And when interest rates rise, it ties and correlates directly to the stock market. And the reason for that is a lot of these companies in the stock market, especially you know tech stocks and tech focused companies, they rely on capital to fund their startups and to fund their ongoing expansions. And when capital becomes more expensive because of the, the Fed raising rates, it has a effect on the bottom lines of those companies. And so if we start to see contraction, and we're gonna, then we're going to start to see the markets tumble downward. And the one thing I can tell you, and, and this is not trying to scare anybody, but if you look at all of the recent, with the, with the exception of the COVID-20 crash, which, you know, that was only a 100-day short-lived crash. But if you see the other ones that we had in this section, the dot-com bust went down 50% roughly, and the global financial crisis went down almost 60%. Some economists are saying if, if history repeats itself, this crash will be the largest one of all time. And if it occurs, they're, exper they're expecting an, at minimum a 50% crash because that's what happened in these other ones. And I hope that doesn't happen. Um, but with everything we're seeing, it's, it's possible. 
Um, you know, I look at the markets every day. I listen to all of the big investment institutions and the, and the content they put out. And there's a 50-50 chance that they're, they're predicting right now that we could be heading into a recession. So very scary, something to think about. I don't want to instill fear. I hate to do that. I don't operate that way. There are some people out there that are fear mongers where they'll try to get you to make decisions on fear. That is not the message that we're trying to get across. The message we are trying to get across is there is the right, a right way to approach these potential what ifs. And our philosophy is that we should be planning for, you know, a worst case scenario instead of hoping for the best. If we plan for the worst and it doesn't occur, at least we had our peace of mind knowing that we had a plan for those potential what ifs. That is all the message that we're trying to bestow here. All right. So, I'll, of course, the disclaimer here is that these numbers don't depict uh, future returns or guarantee any type of future performance. So take it with a grain of salt. This data came from finance.yahoo.com when looking at this S&P 500 performance history. So the question becomes, in regards to volatility, are you overexposed right now? Are you within 10 years of retirement or less? And are you overexposed? And if you are, we understand that the traditional 60-40 portfolio or 50-50 portfolio or 70-30 portfolio, if you're in that right now, you'll see that it doesn't cut it. It's not what it once was because of the low interest rate environment that we've been in for the last decade or more. And because those interest rates are starting to rise, those are having a negative impact on bonds. So bonds are not the vehicle for safety or to hedge the risks of stock volatility. There is a better way and an annuity, a fixed indexed annuity specifically, can be a very suitable alternative um, that you should explore. Why, why not consider some of the alternatives out there to, you know, still provide the same benefits of de-risking a portfolio and hedging volatility risk, but providing a contractual guarantee of principal protection. Interest, rising interest rates don't impact annuities in a negative way. Stock volatility does not impact annuities in a negative way because of the guarantees of principal protection. So market volatility continues to rise on both the gains and losses front. Those with all the retirement assets exposed to market volatility have seen both historic gains, but also historic downturns. While the overall long-term value of the market is a net positive, many consumers have concerns about volatility impacting their assets as they approach retirement. Consider, for example, what kind of gain is needed to recover from a market loss. So here you're going to see an interesting breakdown um, of the different percentages of losses and then what the actual return is needed to break even after one year. So if your portfolio went down 10%, you're going to need that portfolio to provide an 11.2% return just to break even, just to get back to even and, and, and offset that 10% loss. You're going to need 11.2% in positive performance. If your portfolio is down 15%, you're going to need it to perform at 17.7% to break even. If it's down 20%, you need a return of 25% to get back to even so on and so forth. But here's the interesting stat, and, and this is an interesting question to ask your friends because they'll probably get this wrong. But if your portfolio goes down 50%, how much of a return do you need to get back to even? Most people get this wrong, and I know it's crazy, but it's a trick, almost a trick question, right? If it goes down 50%, many assume that you just need 50% return to get back to even. Well, that's not true. You need a hundred percent return. Okay. If you have a dollar and you go spend it and now you only have 50 cents, how much do you need to earn back to make a whole dollar again? Well, if it's 50 cents, that's a hundred percent of your, your existing value, you know, 50, 50 cents 
needing another 50 cents is 100% return? So it's a good question to ask your friends and family. A lot of people do get that wrong, surprisingly. So if you're overexposed, there are ways to get more protection outside of the traditional norms. But the question becomes, will your gains be overwhelmed by inflation or taxes? In an uncertain economic environment, many consumers may be seeking fixed rate products like certificates of deposit or bank CDs for security. And while benefits such as short term durations and a guaranteed interest rate can be appealing, two factors are often overlooked that can negatively impact a conservative fixed rate. Those are taxes and inflation. The hypothetical chart here shows what a real rate of return can be when adjusted for applicable taxes and potential inflation rates. The CD return rates below are calculated using the six month annualized average monthly CD rate as reported by the Federal Reserve. And the tax rate used in the example is the highest marginal federal income tax rate based on $100,000 of taxable income for a married couple filing jointly. The tax rate assumed will not apply to every consumer and the lower tax rate may have a more favorable impact on the real return. The use of alternate assumptions will produce different results. So here you're seeing the different CD rates, average CD, uh, six month CD rates for different years going back to 2000. And then you're seeing the effective tax rates that would have been applied for a joint family, uh, joint married couple filing joint uh, on a hundred thousand dollar income. And then you'll see the inflation consumer price index or what's referred to as the CPI. And then the real return after factoring in the taxes and inflation. So even back all the way to 2000, if you had a 6.58% CD rate, six month CD rate, that is taxed at 28% and it has an inflationary rate of 3.4%, the real return after factoring in the taxes and inflation was only 1.34%. This is something that most people don't think about when looking at CDs. CDs are taxed annually. They're not deferred. Okay. But there are vehicles that are tax deferred and annuities happen to be one of them. So if you look now at, at some of the latter years here, let's just look at, you know, the 2021 data. The average six month CD rate is under 10 basis points, one tenth of a percent at nine BIPs. With the marginal tax rate of 22% and an inflationary rate of 7%, the real return after factoring in taxes and inflation is minus 6.93%. So are you really protecting your money? Are you really using the right vehicle to provide safe rates of return and address taxes and inflation? In this example, the answer to that is no. There are better places to look at. And obviously here with me being, you know, an annuity guy, I'm biased, but annuities are considerably more favorable when it comes to addressing taxes and inflation due to the fact that annuities grow tax deferred. The only time annuities are taxed is if you take them out as a distribution for income or a lump sum. This data is provided by the FDIC.gov website, which is the federal government for the average annualized uh, six month bank CD rates. And then taxfoundation.org provided the uh, tax rates for a joint couple filing joint, 100% or excuse me, $100,000 income. And then again, the U.S. Department of Labor's Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, government website provided the CPI or Consumer Price Index inflation data. So now let's talk about how to find balance with fixed indexed annuities. How can you balance financial protection with potential growth? The balance is key in all aspects of life. Understanding risk return balance is essential for meeting financial and retirement goals. When creating a financial retirement plan, there is no one best product, but some products can be a better fit to help meet your goals. View how various products fare in terms of risk and then consider how a fixed indexed annuity 
might play a part in your retirement accumulation strategy, offering both upside potential and premium protection against market risk. Just before we delve into this chart, you know, one thing I can tell you is that if you had a 60-40 portfolio, or maybe you have one now, and it's 60% stocks, 40% bonds, and you're getting hammered because of the current economic environment where both sides of that portfolio are negative, what if 40, that 40% instead of being in bonds was in a fixed indexed annuity that had a contractual guarantee of principal protection? One thing's for sure is that 40% side of your portfolio would not be losing anything because of the contractual guarantees of principal protection. And if you find the right annuities that offer diversification through the various index crediting strategies, there are a select few, even in this market right now, that are performing in, in a positive manner. They are performing positive in terms of growth while the rest of the markets are down due to the fact that these are volatility controlled index strategies that are designed to provide consistent returns, even in volatile markets. And we have identified a select few of indexed annuities that offer these index strategies that, you know, we're fortunate to offer our clients and that are happy with their results in this market uh, because of the due diligence we've done to analyze these products. And if you'd like to find more about those particular products and you'd like to work with us directly we work with clients in all 50 states and we'd be honored to see how we can help point you in the right direction you can visit our website at annuityassociation.com right there on the main page you can click the red button to schedule your free virtual uh, zoom consultation we'll bring the independent annuity marketplace directly to the comfort of your own living room and help you make informed decisions on whether or not they're right for you. And if they are, great. And if not, that's okay too. But at least you're doing your due diligence to research what's out there. Now, here we are looking again at essentially the risk spectrum, just in a different type of graph. You'll notice the risk line right there in the middle, the, the, the green line. And then as we go up on the graph, you'll notice the different asset classes or vehicles that are associated. So when you cross over that risk line, that, that neutral line of no risk, you'll see that's where you find bonds, variable annuities, mutual funds, and stocks being the highest risk vehicles. And then as you cross below that risk, that neutral line, for the risk spectrum, you'll notice fixed indexed annuities are right there. Then you'll notice traditional fixed annuities, bank CDs, money market accounts, and cash. The key here is understanding that fixed indexed annuities ensure that your premium, premium is another word for your money, your investment, is protected from market downturns, which puts them below the line on the chart. And the above chart here is meant to serve as a general guide on where fixed indexed annuities may fall in the financial services spectrum of common products. It is not a guarantee of performance individually or performance correlation or safety of the above listed vehicles. However, fixed indexed annuities do offer contractual guarantees of principal protection. So let's talk about how fixed indexed annuities perform in up and down markets. So fixed indexed annuities, also referred to as FIAs, generally credit a portion of total index gains based on the crediting method chosen, but don't lose value due to market downturns. So here's a, a fixed indexed annuity with 100% allocation to an annual point-to-point -point with participation rate crediting strategy based on the S&P multi-asset risk-controlled 5% excess return index, or what's also called the S&P Mark 5% excess return index. The accumulation value of a hypothetical fixed indexed annuity, this is assuming no withdrawals and that interest credits to the accumulation value are subject to a hypothetical 75% participation rate, but it does not reflect actual historical performance and is not a guarantee of future res results. This is just an example of how it might work. <clears throat> so when you have an index that your, al your funds are allocated to, the first thing to note is that your funds are not directly invested in the index itself. The index is just used 
as a performance measure to determine how much interest you can earn if that index does perform. Second thing to note here is that when you have a participation rate strategy, participation rate defines how much of the actual index's performance do you as the contract owner participate in, okay? So if the index, for example, goes up 10% in a given crediting period, which let's just assume it's a one-year crediting period. Some of these can be two-year crediting periods, three-year crediting periods. The most common are one-year crediting periods and two-year crediting periods. Those credit crediting periods, before I go into the example, are essentially when the policy is issued, that's the starting point of your crediting period. If you're in a one-year crediting period, that first year crediting period ends on the one-year anniversary. So if you're in a one-year crediting period and this S&P Mark V were to go up 10% in that first year, if you have a 75% participation rate in your contract, that participation rate determines how much of that 10% interest or 10% performance of that S&P Mark V index do you participate in. So if it went up 10% and you have a 75% participation, your interest credit would be 7.5%, 75% of 10%, okay? Or three quarters of 10%. All right, so your interest credit would be 7.5%. That's how much you would receive credited to your contract value. Now, some of these index strategies, they offer above and beyond 100% participation. It just comes down to finding the right ones that are going to provide you the most opportunity for growth while also providing more consistent, smoother rates of return. Now, if you looked here to the market-linked interest, uh, interest example in an up market where the market being the lighter shade of green line, you'll see because of the 75% participation, that incline is just a little bit less because you're not getting all of the 100% gain, but you're getting 75% of it. But here's the real benefit. In a down market, in a market downturn with the, the lighter shade of green representing a down market, your indexed annuity would stay level. It would stay right where it is. It will not go down. And even after you've earned interest, let's say in the first year you earned 7.5% interest, that interest is then locked in. And even if the very next year the markets go down, all of that interest you earned plus your principal is now locked in and cannot go down. It'll just stay level right where it is. So uh, very cool examples here. Now just below, they're gonna show uh, the S&P multi-asset risk controlled 5% excess return index, also known as the S&P Mark V. And they're going to show an example based on a quarterly review of $100,000 directly invested in the S&P Mark V excess return index without any dividends taken into account. Index has been in existence since March 27 of 2017, and the ending values in years prior to inception are determined by the S&P Dow Jones indices or its affiliates using the same methodology as used currently. And then they're going to show the S&P 500 based on a quarterly review of $100,000 directly invested in the S&P 500 without dividends taken into account. And they're going to talk about a unique feature, which we refer to as the annual reset or the crediting period reset. This is probably the most under-discussed, most advantageous feature of an indexed annuity, and that is what's called a reset. And the annual reset feature of many fixed indexed annuity designs means any interest credits are locked in and the gains cannot be lost due to market decreases. So exactly what I said just a moment ago, once, you're, once you earn interest and it's credited on your anniversary date, that interest is, is locked in. It can't be lost due to market downturns. And the annual reset feature only applies to crediting terms that are one year long and that for terms longer than one year, the reset feature coincides with the length of, of that term. So if you're in a two-year crediting period, you have a biannual reset. If you're in a three-year crediting period, you have a triennial uh, crediting period. And so this is how it might look if we were to be in an indexed annuity tied to the S&P uh, Mark V index. 
and then also showing what the S the general S and P 500 would look like if you were directly invested in it. So you have the gray gray line indicating the S and P 500. Uh, I'm sorry, multi asset risk controlled index. You have the dark green shade, which is showing the actual annuity allocation, and then you're showing the traditional S and P 500 in the lighter green. And so if you notice the dark green, it looks like a staircase. That's the annuity. So in years of positive growth, it goes up. But in years of flat or negative performance, it looks like a step to a staircase. It goes up and then goes sideways. It goes up, it goes sideways. So that shows you how it's protecting you from the downside. Now, here's what's interesting. If you notice that the lighter shade of green, that's the S&P 500. And so in this example, this is uh, showing you what it looked like for the global financial crisis, um, as well as the dot-com bubble in the beginning to, of the 2000s, you would have not lost a dime. You just would have went sideways like a staircase step and rode the market up when it performed well, but never go down. So if you look at 2007, when it went down 57%, your annuity just would have had a zero credit for that year indicating that you didn't lose anything and that the markets were negative, but your principal and any interest that was locked in stayed level. And then as the market started to go back up, you'll see it climb the staircase again. And then anytime it goes down, it stays flat. If it goes up, it goes up like a staircase, so on and so forth. So that is an example of how the annual reset feature works in an indexed annuity. It's probably the most under discussed, but probably most advantageous feature of an indexed annuity. It's something that I talk to about with my clients uh, regularly because it's so important to understand that if these market uncertainties do occur, the reset feature is our feather in our cap. It's going to help protect our money, but also capture the upward momentum should the markets rebound. We get to lock in those low points and protect our money, but then ride up the volatility in an upward fashion, in a positive momentum to capture the most growth possible. So it's a very, very under, under discussed feature of an indexed annuity. I hope that made sense to you. So here's North American, uh, an A-plus rated company, very strong company, uh, one of our partners. We are an independent annuity advisory firm. We work with every major insurance company in the United States. We are uh, an independent firm, meaning we represent you, not the insurance companies. So uh, our job is to act in the best interest of our clients to ensure that we're identifying and helping them identify and understand all of the annuities that are available to them to meet their needs above and beyond, and that we're helping you identify, understand, and, and ultimately provide as much transparency through education to help you make informed decisions. North American is just one of the, you know, many different insurance companies that offer annuities in the United States, and they're all about strength and numbers. They're a company built on a foundation of financial strength, and their roots go back more than 130 years with the 1886 founding of a North American Accident Association. North American has consistently earned high ratings based on our financial strength, operating performance, and ability to meet obligations to their policyholders and contract holders. North American has grown and is a member company of Salmon's Financial Group. And so as of the time of producing this document, they have over $109.6 billion in total assets under Salmon's Financial Group Management, over $102.4 billion in Salmon's Financial Group total liabilities, over $35.3 billion with North American Life and Annuity total assets, and over $33.3 billion uh, with North American Life and Annuity total liabilities over 1.7 million life and annuity policy holders, and over 130 years of experience with North American company for life and health insurance. They're currently holding an A-plus rate rating through AM Best, which is a superior financial stability rating. They also hold a strong rating from S&P Global Ratings and a stable rating from Fitch Ratings. 
So I hope this has added some value to your uh, search and helping find balance in your retirement portfolio. Uh, it's never easy, but the, the goal here is to explore all of the available resources to you to help you make an informed and educated decision on what is right for you. And um, obviously me being in the annuity side of the business here, uh, I'm a bit biased, so take that with a grain of salt. However, I do act in the best interest of all of our clients, and I I would hold a strong argument against anyone that's against annuities when it comes to using them appropriately to de-risk an overall retirement portfolio, to provide opportunity for more protected growth and stable, guaranteed lifetime income. Uh, there's one thing to be said, and again, I mentioned it earlier, is that economists all agree unanimously that annuities create more optimal outcomes for retirement portfolios when used appropriately to de-risk a portfolio and provide income potential. So if you'd like to explore the other side of the spectrum here, and that is fixed indexed annuities and using them to de-risk your portfolio, it still give you fair rates of return on the upsides of the market. You can work with us directly by going to annuityassociation.com. Right there on the main page, you can click the red button to request your free virtual Zoom meeting. It'll actually take you right to our calendar where you can schedule a time that's convenient for you. And we'll bring the annuity marketplace directly to the comfort of your own living room. You can sit on the couch, sip a cup of coffee, and we can help you understand annuities to the point where you can identify if they're right for you if so, that's great. If not, that's okay too. Uh, but we want to make sure that we're giving people enough education to make informed decisions. Uh, if you have a question, you can post it right here on this uh, channel where you're watching this video right now. We'd be happy to respond and answer any questions that you might have. We certainly appreciate all the feedback that we've received from uh, our clients and prospective clients, as well as advisors throughout the country who are, are really just saying great things about the level of transparency and education we're bringing to the annuity marketplace. It's definitely something that's needed. So we're thankful for that feedback and we are committed to continuing that mission to bring in more transparency to these important decisions. This is Jeremiah Conjure with Annuity Association signing off. Thanks for watching. If you've gotten some value, give us a thumbs up, like, and share this video on the platform you're watching it on. We certainly appreciate that. Everybody have a great day and take care of one another. So long.